The new form builder brings fully functional interactive forms natively to Framer without the need for any third party components or integrations. In this tutorial, I'll show you just how easy it is to build a form, style it, and publish it to the web without writing a single line of code. To add a form, we can head to the insert menu, go down to forms, grab the new form builder, and drag it onto the canvas. Boom, we've got a default form to start customizing. Let's take a look at the anatomy of this thing. One of the coolest things about forms in Framer is that they aren't some rigid code component. They're completely freeform, no pun intended, which means you can lay them out and style them with complete freedom. At the top level, we get a frame for the entire form which comes with a vertical stack layout applied by default, which makes a lot of sense. This frame also has a few special settings for what happens when a visitor submits the form, which we'll talk about later on. But besides that, this is a regular stack that we can resize or reposition, change the gap, padding, or even add fills, borders, and shadows. But we'll style this a little bit later on. Within the parent frame for the form, we have a set of frames, each called label that group each input with a text box. Again, these labels are just regular frames, but you can probably tell by the icon on the layer list that these are a little bit special. The icon comes from the fact that in the accessibility section of the properties panel, this frame has a tag called label applied to it. In addition to helping with accessibility and SEO, this label element is also what makes the text layer within it clickable to focus the matching input element. On that note, within each label frame, we have a text box and the input itself. Want to know what's special about this text box? Nothing. It's just a text box. Do what you want with it, but I do recommend keeping it where it is for the sake of accessibility and SEO. Just know it's a regular text box. The input layer is where the magic happens. It also works a lot like a regular frame, but this is the most special element we've looked at so far. Before we dig into its properties, the first thing to know is that this is one of four different categories of input. This happens to be a text input, but there's also select, which is a drop down menu of options we set, checkbox to toggle one or multiple options on or off, and radio to choose a single item from a group of options. Each category of input has its own properties you can customize, but let's get back to this text input because there's more to it than meets the eye. These inputs actually have browser native validation to make sure visitors add properly formatted text. We can tell the browser what to expect by choosing an appropriate type for each input. We can choose between text for a single line of text, like a name, text area for multiple lines or even paragraphs of text, email, which will validate the format of an email address and prompt mobile browsers to adjust the keyboard, number, which validates that the text is a number, and prompts mobile browsers to switch to a keyboard with number keys. Phone, which will switch mobile browsers to a phone keypad, much easier to type on. URL, which also prompts mobile browsers to adjust the keyboard. Date, which will provide the browser's native date picker. And time, which will provide the browser's native time picker. I'll keep this first option set to text for visitors to type their own name. Next, we have the name of the input, which determines how the submitted data should be labeled when we receive it. But before you start making up crazy words because you think you're the only one that'll see it, the name of the input also helps the browser figure out what info should autofill if it's enabled. We can also edit the placeholder text that appears before a visitor's typed anything, decide if this field is required, and add quite a few other properties from the plus button. For our purposes, we're gonna want a couple more inputs. So I'll select the frame for the entire form and click the blue plus button at the bottom. I'll choose to add another text input. This one will be to write the body of the message. So let's change the text in this little text box to say message. Then we got to change the input type to text area, change the name to message. And for the placeholder text, I'll just put, Hey, great. Another form field ready to go. Let's go ahead and add one last input, a checkbox to allow folks to opt in to receiving our newsletter. And what do you know? The default text is exactly what we needed. What are the odds of that? While we're at it, we don't need this location input, so I'll grab that whole label frame and press delete. Looking good. Now we're ready to start playing around with the style of things. Let's start with the frame for the entire form. I'm gonna give it a fill 
and create a super subtle gradient from 8% gray to 6% gray. Next, I'll round these corners to a radius of about 20. Cool. Now on to the input fields themselves. The key takeaway here is that you style these just like you'd style anything else. It's really just a hybrid of a text box and a frame with a couple small nuances. One of which is that we have two different text colors. The first is for the text that a visitor actually types, which I'll change to white so it stands out. And the second is the color of the placeholder text, which I'll keep diminished slightly with a 60% gray. I'll also remove the border and set the fill to white at a super low opacity. That's pretty much what I'm going for for when this field is unfocused, but we can also change the effect of how the field looks when it's clicked on and focused. I'll click Effect and start by adding a fill that's super dark blue. Then tweak the border color slightly to match that same hue of blue. Then get a little crazy by adding a shadow to create a little glow around the field. I'll choose my brightest blue. Set the X and Y to zero to keep the glow centered. Crank the blur way up to 30 and knock the spread down to negative 10. There we go. Nice, soft, subtle glow. The last thing is adding a transition so this glow can come in smoothly. The defaults are fine. Let's preview it. Awesome. We get the border and the beautiful glow fading in on focus and fading away when we click away. You can get even more crazy with focus and defocus states and interactions by turning inputs into components, but we'll save all that for a different tutorial. So we've got the style of our first input dialed in. Do we really want to do it over again for these other two? I don't think so. We can right click the finished one, hover over copy and choose copy style. Then shift click the other inputs, right click, hover over paste and choose paste style. Done deal. Let's give it a preview. Beautiful. The last piece of the form is the submit button, which is already a component right out of the box, which we can press enter to go in and edit. Within the component, you'll find hover and press states, as well as variants to reflect the status of the form. You can leave these styles as they are or style them however you'd like. I'll give the primary variant a blue fill, which cascades down to the other variants, except the hover and press states since those already have a color override. I'll make hover a darker blue and the press state the darkest blue. Cool. The loading state already has this sweet little animated spinner. I'm going to leave these alone and head down to the error state. I'll change the fill to a nice solid red and fix this text contrast by changing it to a super light pink. There we go. I'm happy with how each of these looks. Let's head back to the home page. If we scroll down the properties for the submit button component, you'll see it has a special section where we can map each state of the form to one of the variants we were just looking at. By default, loading and success are already here and already mapped. And from the plus button, you can choose to add error and disabled states and map them to the appropriate variant. On the topic of a successfully submitted form, we also have the option to redirect the visitor to a specific page, like a thank you page. Let's select the top level frame for this form, head down to redirect in the properties panel. And in my case, I do have a little thank you page to let visitors know that we'll get back to them within 48 hours. But we're missing one crucial step, deciding where the submitted data actually goes. With the form frame still selected, we get three choices for where the submitted data can be sent. We can either pick one or combine several. We can choose email, which will send each submission directly to our inbox, webhook to connect with third-party services, or populate data directly to a Google Sheet. For my purposes, I'll keep it simple and choose email. Then choose a name to display for the sender, set the subject line for these submissions, and even add some body copy with additional context. Simple as that. Now each time the form gets submitted, we'll receive an email with all the info. Forms also come with state-of-the-art spam protection that works its magic quietly in the background, behind the scenes, preventing unwanted messages from bots and crawlers. Let's publish and test it out. Publishing, done. Open in the browser, Joseph, 
josephframer.com. And yes, and submit. Done deal. Let's see what comes through. And here's the email we received with all the information submitted, neatly formatted, and good to go. Let's recap what goes into setting up a custom form. Drop in the form builder, delete what you don't need, add the inputs you do need, set your field properties on the inspector, adjust the layout and styling to your liking, and choose where to send the data. That's it. Now head to Framer and start creating beautiful, functional forms for your site. Thank you.